Okay, so in the last video, I mentioned that we're going to get into it and testing some real world stuff. For instance, this code that we had from the React 16 for Everyone series. Now, if you did not take this course, it was a basically, uh, we're hitting an API from the moviedb.org, uh, tmdb.org. And we're grabbing this information and displaying various movies. For instance, a single movie like this simply just has a link, an overdrive, a poster path, and that's pretty much it. It's just a poster with a link. Now, I picked movie.js as the very first thing we want to test because it is the most simple here. And even though it's the most simple, as you're going to see, we're still going to have a bunch of hoops that we haven't had to jump through yet. And these are the kind of things that really just put people off of testing, right? They think, okay, they see basic examples in testing, and then they get into their own code and some real world stuff. They try to test it and it breaks. Okay. So let's go ahead and we're going to address some stuff that is real world breakage. So that way, when you try to test your own code, you'll know what to do. Okay, so what we're going to be doing is creating a new file here. And this is just going to be the same name movie.test.js. Okay, now inside of this file, we're going to go ahead and first import and bring in all of our stuff. I like to again do this from another test file, I can do it from, uh, let's say one of the other ones that was using react testing library, we can say maybe movie form was pretty good. We're going to need to bring in render um, and that sort of stuff from here. I'm going to actually just go ahead and grab the dependencies from up top here and then head to movie.test along with the after each cleanup. Okay. Now I'm going to leave react. I'm going to leave render. I'm going to remove fire event because we're not going to be firing any events. Let me get this a little bit bigger here. And now we're going to import movie from movie. Nice and easy, right? Next thing we want to do is write our test. We can say test and we can say test. We're testing the movie component. Now this movie component actually expects to have some uh, props coming in. In fact, it's expecting a movie. And if we were to look at the movie expected prop types, it would see that it needs a title. Now, these expected prop types are interesting because it just says it needs a title in this series, React 16 for everyone. This should really have been, hey, we need more than just a title. We need a poster underscore path like this. Uh, we need an ID, so we can say ID, all of which are strings, okay? So check it out. Okay, so that's all the information that this component's going to be using. Let's go ahead and head back to our test. In movie test, we want to now have what is a arrow function inside of here, and we're going to simply call our render. Now, in the past, we've always just done render outputting a variable immediately, and that's cool, but sometimes you don't need to do that. So if we just simply call render like this without even saving the results to a variable, this is still going to work. Now, I'm going to talk about this. Uh, this needs to be now the component, which is just movie like this. Okay, and we're going to see the benefits to doing this. If I save this, we're immediately going to get some errors. And this is kind of interesting because what we're getting here is warning failed prop type movie is marked as required, but movie value is undefined. And that's going to lead me to the point of this video in particular, the crux of this, how do we test for when an error should be expected? For instance, we are using this component and we are expecting there to be an error at this point. We're saying, hey, if we do not pass any props, then this thing should throw an error. Well, how do we do that? Right now, it's just a console error. And if we want to test to make sure that that console error is going to throw and we don't have any props, what we want to do is first mock the console.error, okay? And just like we mocked any other function, you can mock functions that are just called. All we have to do is say console.error and is equal to just.fn, okay? Now at this point, it's pretty, it's pretty neat because what we can do in here is we can say we expect, we expect console.error to be called, okay? And now if we expect console.error to be called, you can see that we are no longer getting that fail. In fact, our test, well, it's failing for an entirely another reason. It cannot read property of undefined. 
And that's simply because our component at this stage in the game did not check, right? It, it's saying, hey, it's going to issue an error. Uh, but if that movie isn't in here, well, it's not going to do a whole lot to prevent this from trying to load anyways. Now, one solution we could do here is simply have conditional rendering of this functional stateless component by wrapping it in curly brackets like this. And we could do something like if movie does not exist, like if there is no movie, then return null like this. Otherwise, return, not returb, return like this. And then, and then check it out. We have this going here, uh, although we are getting a little bit of an error with our test. So let's see what we did wrong here. Oh, to be called. Oh, it's not a B itself. It's to be with one E. My E key has been uh, double pressing for some reason. I don't know why these Mac keyboards, you know how they are. Uh, so we can see console.error to be called, and that test is now passing. That's awesome. Because, well, I mean, uh, we've passed this test because this movie component is going to have some sort of console error if we did not pass any props into it. Okay, so that is the purpose of this video here. If we want to spy on anything, even errors like console errors, you can mock them. And we just did here. And we we're able to see that, hey, this component is going to call it. And not only is it gonna call it, but we no longer have that error being output here. Check it out. If we didn't mock this function and we didn't even test this, no matter what, this error is gonna pop out in here in our tests. And even though the test passes, it's still obnoxious. So, uh, you know, mocking out your console error and seeing if it does get fired is definitely a technique you can use to, to actually uh, account for that kind of thing. Okay, what we're going to be doing in the next video is taking this thing one step further where we're actually going to need to render this component. Right now we have no movie and because we have no movie, it's simply outputting null and an error is being called. Now, what we're going to be doing in the next video is a couple of things that we maybe haven't touched on. We're going to be having multiple tests per file, and we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. And we're going to be testing a component that uses a React router link. So that's going to be the purpose of the next video is those two items specifically, because unfortunately, those both have pitfalls. So check it out. As always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.